Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. He hides it again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. Again, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is like a dragnet cast into the sea that brings in a hall of all kinds. When it is full, the fishermen haul it ashore, then sitting down, they collect the good ones in a basket and throw away those that are of no use. This is how it will be at the end of time. The angels will appear and separate the wicked from the just, to throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Have you understood all this? They said, Yes. And he said to them, Well then, every scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out from his storeroom things new and old. The Gospel of the Lord.
At the time of our Lord, those who had treasure often buried it in fields to prevent it being stolen. And over time, they would forget where they had buried it. Years later, walkers would stumble across it. Some might actively go in search of it, like archaeologists do today. Even in antiquity, pearls were highly prized and dealers would go to great lengths to purchase them. Now Jesus used these examples of everyday life to teach us something about the Kingdom of God. In ancient Jewish law, the person who owns the field also owns the treasure, no matter who buried it. Now in the parable, the man who found the treasure, he was determined to sell everything he owned to buy the field. Now to an outsider, this may have seemed a rather rash decision, but not to this man who knew the true value of what he had found. Jesus tells us somewhere else in the Gospel to store up treasures in heaven. In order to do that, however, we have first to discover it here on earth. When we enter into a deeper relationship with our Lord, who is himself the parent beyond price, other attractions in life seem less appealing. Like the merchant, we're prepared to forego things which we once thought we couldn't live without. The lockdown has taught us a thing or two in this regard, I believe. I once asked a newly ordained young priest if he missed the bright lights of London where he lived and worked prior to entering the seminary. He answered, not one little bit. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Our closeness to our Lord is the priority, taking precedence over everything else. We can say with St. Paul the following words, I consider everything in life as so much rubbish compared to the true joy of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. For him, I have accepted the loss of everything. Remember the man in the Gospel today, he sold everything he owned to buy the field. Also, the finding of the precious pearl seems to be the fulfilment of a personal quest by the merchant. I can draw something from this. Unless my faith brings me closer to Jesus personally, then even though a pearl of wisdom may come my way, I may be blind to its true value. As scripture says, it would be like throwing pearls before swine. Or if my faith is mere cultural, or more cultural than personal, then I might not see the treasure of my faith in Jesus for what it really is. To what lengths am I prepared to go to hold on to the treasure of my faith in Jesus, especially if it is being tested? Like the original owners of the field in the story, have I buried the treasure of my faith and forgotten how precious it once was to me? If our relationship with God is something we treasure, then we want to bequeath it to the next generation. In ordinary life, parents, for instance, would be loath to cut out from their will any family members and leave them with absolutely nothing. But what nuggets of spiritual gold are we likely to bequeath to the next generation in the realm of personal faith in Jesus Christ. Will Christ become their pearl beyond compare? If we have found this treasure, everyone will benefit. We will be at the same time laying up treasure for ourselves in heaven.
Let us offer our prayers to God the Father. Like King Solomon, let us pray for wisdom and discernment when making decisions about important issues in our lives. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that we may treasure our Catholic faith and pass it on to the next generation. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, all creation, for through your goodness we have received wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, they gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring the heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance Peace of the Lord.
Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the merciful, they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God.
We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>